What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer and today I'm going to show you how to create an interactive slideshow component in Framer that will allow you to create a set of images, easily navigate between them with arrows or these small dot components and there will be a really nice scale in transition when you make those adjustments and it'll work on desktop, tablet and mobile. All of this is going to be built in Framer and will be live code that you can view on the web. Let's get started. You'll notice that to the left, I've pulled in four images from Unsplash and I've named them different things so that we can put them in our carousel component. So first I'm gonna take all these and apply a light bit of styling. All I'm gonna do is take the radius and change it from zero to 24 pixels in rounding so that it matches these card components up here, which I created in a previous video. Next, I'm going to go to the layout section and I'm gonna click Shift C or columns and I will drag that in here. And then I'm going to position this as zero. And then I'm going to make sure that there's no spacing between these two elements. So I'll move it up 21 pixels. I'm gonna set the width of this to 1200 so that it will fill our container. And then I'm gonna change the height here to be 600 pixels high. And then what I will do is I will change our gap to be 24 pixels. And I'll change the padding to be 24 pixels as well. Next, I'll click insert, and then I will go down to this element section, and within there, I'll go to this lightning bolt icon where it says interactive, and I'm going to go to slideshow, and then I'm going to drag that in the middle here, and then you can see this little component comes up which says connect to content. I'm gonna scale this up a little bit first, so I'm actually gonna delete these two other frames by selecting them, hitting delete, then I'll go to the slideshow component, and then I will change the width to fill and I'll change the height to fill. And then you'll see that this takes up the full space of this entire module. And then I am going to go down to this section where it says content within slideshow. And what content does is it pulls in other images or assets that you want to put within this slideshow, but by default, there's nothing. So if I click here and I click add, it will create a new instance where I can place content. So I'm gonna select this drop down, and you can see I've named all of these images over here and I can select one of those and it will place it within the slideshow container. I'll click add three more times and then I will go ahead and select each of these images and you're gonna notice that you won't actually see them. But if I go over and hit the play icon, when I scroll down on the page, it will automatically scroll through to the next one or I can click and trigger those automatically. Let's say I don't want that slideshow to play automatically and I actually wanted to have a click to trigger the next image. Below this direction setting, there's this thing that says autoplay. And so let's toggle that off by saying no. And then instead of these going to the left when I move them, let's have them go top to bottom. And then you can see if I hit play, the arrows change and then also the dot icon indicating where you're at changes. So then if I hit this, it will push the next image up and you'll be able to navigate to the next one. I'm actually gonna keep it left to right for the sake of this video, so I'll click this back. I will actually keep autoplay off, but let's say I wanna make this draggable. If I click yes, then if I click play again, you can see not only can I click to navigate between things, but then I can actually click and drag and then it'll trigger the next image and then it will sit kind of in the full width of the screen when I do that drag to initiate the next image in the carousel. Next you'll see the section which says effects and these effects are applied to images that are to the left and right of this carousel image. So if I change this opacity to 0.2 and let's say I change the scale to 0.5, what will happen when I click play is if I trigger the next image in the carousel, that image will scale down and then the other one will fade in. I think that feels a little bit drastic, though I do like that scale effect. So I'm gonna change the scale to 0.75. And now you can see if I, again, click on this, you're gonna get that same scale in effect, but it's gonna be a little bit less drastic. Finally, I'm gonna change the gap to be 24 pixels, like what I had in the container above. And then below that, I've got this transition section, which I can basically have this be instant. I could have it be eased or you could have it spring in, which will mean most of the animation happens on the front end versus on the back end. Let's change this to ease, just so that we can see what it feels like. I'm going to hit play, and then you'll see 
I've got this kind of weird snappy ease. I actually like the spring more. So let's go back and we will select spring here. And then in terms of clipping, we could set that to be a fade if we wanted to, or we could set that to show the overflow. In this instance, there is no overflow, so it wouldn't see anything, but I don't like this fade that you get here because it actually makes these buttons less visible. So let's keep that off for now. Below that, you've got the ability to change the design of the arrow buttons. I'm gonna slightly change the style of the left and right arrows here. So first I'm going to take this black and I'm actually gonna make it blue. And then I am going to keep the previous and next arrows as they are. Uh, Framer treats those as images. You can't really replace them with icons. So we'll just keep those as is. So the size is 40 pixels, which is good. Let's change the radius to 10 pixels rather than 40. So it matches the styling of our buttons up here. And then we're not gonna have those buttons fade in. And then if you change the spacing to group, they'll be in the center. You could also have them be like top left or in the bottom left. I think for the sake of this, we're just gonna keep them centered and we're gonna keep the spacing spaced out. And then the inset, we'll change that to be 24 pixels like so. And then the last thing we could change is this little dot carousel, which we've got at the bottom. So again, similar things apply to this as do the buttons. I could change the size of the dots if I wanted to. I could change the inset. I can make the gap more or less. I could also change the padding if I wanted to. And then you can add the visual design radius, etc. I'm going to keep this as is because I don't really have any issues with it. So let's X this out. And now if I hit play, we can see the full carousel here. So, and I'll click to the right and I'll get the next image in our carousel. And then if I bring this down to tablet size, you can see that the same thing works. And then if I go to mobile, you still have the same carousel, but there's some spacing issues here. So let's go ahead and go over to tablet. And the first thing you'll notice is that this is too far away from this component. So I'm going to move this up so that there is no space between these. And then I'm also going to increase the vertical height of this mobile comp a little bit. And then it looks like there is a little bit of space here. Now there isn't. And the other thing I want to do here is I actually want to change the height of this. So I'm going to change this to be, let's say 300. And that way we retain more of the aspect ratio that we have on desktop. So now you'll see if I hit play again, got this component, which feels much better, and then works better on tablet, and it works well on desktop too. One final tweak I'm going to make is I'm going to go to the arrows on mobile, and I'm just gonna make them slightly smaller. So I'm gonna make these 32 pixels, and then I'm gonna make the inset only 12 pixels. And the reason for that is if you look on desktop, these need to be big and clickable, and the same thing on tablet. But when you get to mobile, this is so small that you don't want these buttons taking too much of the visual real estate of the photo. And then I'm actually going to increase the size of this gallery just a tiny bit. So let's actually change this back to 400. And there you go. Now we have a slideshow component that works for desktop, tablet, and mobile. So this functions on desktop, tablet. And then if we try this on mobile, you can see it works well for that too. So that's it. You now have a slideshow component that you can really easily use for images across your website. And you could have this be a full width module like you see here. You could take this and put it in the hero section or you could put it in another part of your website. Uh, Framer makes it really easy to add or remove images to these slideshows. And then you can really easily update the transitions and the styling of the components to control those as well. Now that we've designed our entire slideshow, the last thing we need to do is click publish. I'm going to click update. If you're working from a new project, you'll have to publish for the first time. And once you do that, if you click on this link, you'll see that you actually have a full website on the internet that you can easily share and update and test with friends. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of Framer, slideshow components, and how to create an interactive slideshow of images for desktop, tablet, and mobile designs next time you're building a website in Framer. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.